Joining us is Dr. Andrina Shufran, and I wanted to talk a bit about pollination because it's so important to our lives. Very much so. And in fact, many, not just our food, but many of the things we utilize depend upon pollinators. Yes, these tiny, small, irritating animals can make as much as two-thirds of the food that we eat every single day through their pollination services. And with that two-thirds of our food, you gave a great analogy earlier to me. If you would take away two of our three meals a day, kind of visualize the impact that insects have on our right. food. And they also affect many other areas of our lives as well. All the, the meat, the cattle production that relies upon alfalfa and clover, those two plants are exclusively pollinated by bees. Mm -hmm. And then of course we have textiles and Cotton wax. and flax, <laughs> wax, honey, yeah. candles, cosmetics, lipstick, chapstick. All the things that we don't think about that we use every single day that are provided free of charge mm -hmm. by these animals. And we're going to look at over the next few weeks um, some of the native pollinators uh, to North America. But I wanted to start with what's probably a little more familiar to most people and that's the European honeybee. Um, of course pollinators include butterflies and flies and all sorts of critters but we'll start with the bees. Yeah, um, the one that everybody's familiar with. Yeah, and so the European bees are not native to the U.S. but they are naturalized here. Very much so. They will live in old logs and um, hollow trees and even between the siding and the walls of a building mm -hmm. in your house or in the shed. Any place that has that perfect dark space where they can make their homes and reproduce. Okay, and so even though we're used to kind of associating them with these man-made hives, they're pretty much out there um, doing their thing all on their own. All on their own. They will be, they're able to find that perfect spot to survive and reproduce, even survive a cold winter like the one we just experienced. And we've heard a lot recently about colony collapse disorder. Um, but I want to reassure homeowners that that's not something we really need to worry about as, as far as in our gardens. Not, not very much. Colony collapse disorder is a, a syndrome of symptoms that comes together that happens when these giant semi trucks full of commercial production honeybees are trucked all around the country and they're exposed to disease after disease after disease and uh, virus after virus and pesticide after pesticide as they travel, plus the stress of just moving. And then this all works together to cause the whole colony to collapse. There's too few bees. In our native environment, they're very successful at when things are bad, they'll fix them. We might have a few diseases, we might have pesticides in our garden, and as long as they aren't directly applied, these guys can handle them. Excellent. And we'll look at some ways we can protect and even encourage and enhance um, not just the European honeybee, but also our native bees in some coming segments. But Great. I appreciate you sharing a little bit about these beautiful creatures with us. My pleasure. You want some honey? Oh, I'd love some. <laughs>